I remember a time when I didn't have to walk around with certain things in mind. I didn't pay much attention to the stars. I was complacent with the cycles of the sun and moon. And I had a relatively basic understanding of our solar system, space, the cosmos. Today, although I don't let these things consume me, I don't walk around like that anymore. I have become aware of certain things. Some would say certain truths. Well, outside of the truth, they would really be discrepancies. When people first heard of the Mandela Effect, they heard this and then people started finding all these discrepancies about what they've always been told. The same with the Flat Earth Theory. People heard this, they heard what was said and they began to find these discrepancies about what they've always been told about the Earth. And it is the same with Planet X. People have heard something about a mystery planet that comes passing around our sun, bringing destruction with it. So they run and go do their digging. So now between what they have told us and what they are telling us and what we are discovering for ourselves, there are many discrepancies. We're going to have to go through some things and they don't want you to know what's coming. And they are trying their darndest to hide this. Quite often they use numbers to do this. They don't like to throw specific numbers. That's why you always see a couple of numbers with a bunch of zeros behind them. That's to throw everyone off. Plus, plus, they try their absolute best to hide the spiritual side of all of this. The space agencies, when they look out there, they can see intelligence at work. They'll have you believe it's nature and things out in space just happen according to the laws of the universe because that is how they present it to you. You think you can just grab a telescope and start figuring things out as an amateur astronomer? Nope. Why? Because they lie about the numbers and they bury the past. So we are going to take a closer look at what they don't want you to know about our multi-star system. One of the things you're going to have to do first is get the idea of Planet X out of your head. Just let it go. Forget about it. Okay, do that first. And let's start fresh. The first thing to understand and accept about space and the universe is that things don't take billions of years to occur. They don't take millions or even thousands of years to occur. Some of these things that they tell you take thousands or millions of years, the truth is, those same events could take only weeks, a few days. Everything out there in the universe is moving fast, faster than we think. The universe likes speed, keep that in mind. There is nothing happening slowly. Here's what they do, they lie to you, straight up. There is no other way to put it, they lie all the time. And see, the reason they get away with this is because we don't ask enough questions and because we are not allowed to ask the right questions. You know what, folks? At this point, you should be able to figure it out. I mean, after you ask one of these people in power who you think has the answers to the alien question, as soon as you hear the word, well, or, well, all I can say is, or, well, let's just say that, as soon as you hear any of that, you should automatically think, yep, aliens exist. They just said it. How come no one has ever said, nope, aliens don't exist? Well, they are aliens in the minds of many, but they know what they are. Those who are privy to the information. But you know what? We have the information. We've been told over and over again for a very long time now. 
but very few listen, very few understand. It's too fantastic to take seriously. Do you guys know how they measure the size of a star? It is quite complex. There is a formula, actually there are several formulas. You need to know the distance, the exact distance, the luminosity, the angle size, and the problem is the stars are moving and these variables change. First of all, there are too many stars to study, so they have their favorites or the ones they believe to be the closest to us or those that are in our galaxy. It's funny, they steadily watch the movement of the stars and do you know what? They sometimes see stars that change their movement. The ones they observe doing this, it's almost like the stars are making course corrections. Listen folks, even if you are the most skilled astronomer out there, you need to be really good at math to know the truth. And you have to take your own measurements. You can't rely on estimated data, right? They tell you a star is 300 million light years away. What good does that do you? You can't use that number to determine the size of a star. It is not precise. How does that work? You see, an amateur astronomer is going to try and be smart and use some data provided by these agencies and scientists, and some of the data is false. So an amateur astronomer using that data will get it wrong. See, most people think about time, how long it's going to take. It's actually more about motion. When it comes to space, it's about motion, not time. Jupiter. How many of you have seen the movie 2010, I believe it is? In that movie, at the end of that movie, we have a second sun, right? The result of Jupiter igniting. So, let me ask you, what is Jupiter? What is Jupiter really? See, they don't tell you these things because they are warp-minded, crooked, and in some cases evil. And it's crazy because we have to operate by faith when they know a lot of the truth. CERN, you know that CERN among its other functions, it is or was an experiment to, let's just say they were, let's just say there was an experiment to prove the existence of God. Why do you think they call it the God particle? They're particle collisions, basically they are dissecting particles to see how they are formed or made. And they have discovered that these particles are engineered. And this is CERN's big secret, but they can't tell you that. They attempted to put the idea out there when they started talking about the God particle, except many people didn't know what they meant by that. Getting back to the second sun, I've asked this question before, what is the sun revolving around? Simple question. I'm telling you everyone they are and have been preparing for the inevitable. They know what's coming, they just don't know when. They will be affected by what's coming. They don't know when, but they know everything else. It is out of their control regardless. They also know this, every time they come up with a solution to a problem, they are blocked. Their equipment is hijacked by an unseen force. How about that one? Their weaponry is often hijacked or hacked. Not by people, not by aliens. Remember how I said one time that just about everything is maintained, it is kept in balance. And all this time, there has been this wall between us and the spiritual realm. That wall is coming down. It is partly to do with what is coming from space. Think about this for a moment. A magnet has invisible forces surrounding it. It can repel opposite forces and attract like forces. It is electromagnetism and it is what gives everything its shape that's why the planets and stars are the shape they are inside those forces there is access to another dimension this is why the spiritual realm is going to flood over into our realm and this is why as the second sun descends upon us we will at the same time be entertaining the spillover of the spiritual realm into our own world. 
CERN has open doorways. Yes, they have. The anomalies that have occurred, some of them, you don't know about them. Extraordinary as they were, you never heard about them, not even in the alternative media. Even the most craziest conspiracy channel that is out there, you haven't heard of the spiritual monsters that were released by the power of CERN's magnets. You know, with a strong enough magnet, you could wipe the information off the human brain, much like you wipe the information off of a hard drive of a computer. Now, because this twin star has been through here before, we know that it has ties or a relationship with our solar system. If this object is truly a binary twin to our sun, then that would mean the two objects actually revolve around each other. They pull each other in closer and closer together. When they are both close enough to exchange energy, the weaker star will feed off of the brighter star, dimming that star, and the weaker star will brighten up. Then both stars will push against each other and the other star will be pushed away again for another 4,000 years or so. So you really don't want to keep that image of planet X revolving around the sun in your head. Now here's the problem. That other star likely has objects or planets revolving around it. Between Mars and Jupiter, we have what? The asteroid belt, then out past Neptune, we have what? The Kuiper belt. And what else? The Oort cloud, right? The Oort cloud is actually just a theory. They don't know if it actually exists, but many argue that's where comets come from. The Oort cloud is supposedly composed of icy debris some the size of mountains. But the Oort cloud is said to cover the entire solar system in a sphere of icy debris. So you can imagine how difficult it would be to prove that. You would have to locate objects very far away, billions of objects that are all relatively the same distance from the sun in order to create this sphere. I mean, compared to the size of other objects in the solar system, it's not easy. The only other way we would know if it's there is if other star systems have this Oort cloud. Even if the Oort cloud doesn't exist, what would happen to the planets of two stars when they get close enough? The distance from our sun to the Kuiper belt is a good 30 to 50 astronomical units. One astronomical unit is the distance from the Earth to the sun, right? Now let's say this other star, the sun's twin, has a similar setup. And let's say its furthest planet or Kuiper belt is around 20 astronomical units. Don't worry about the numbers, I just want to paint a picture in your head. That means that the closest this other star can get to our sun is around 70 astronomical units or the outer object of both systems may cross paths. Can you imagine? What would that look like in the sky? They would probably look like other stars in the sky, except these are brighter and they seem to pop up out of nowhere, which will probably happen with this twin star when it gets close enough. It will just appear and get brighter and brighter as our sun gets dimmer and dimmer. Imagine the sight. You wake up one morning and there is a tiny star next to the sun that just gets bigger and brighter as the days go by. And that's not the only thing. At night, you look up at the stars and the stars are shaking. Literally like the way something looks when someone is shaking a camera. Just the thought of that makes me nauseous. At the same time, we'll be dealing with pretty lights in the sky. Colors. Pretty colors of death. Not to mention the sounds from space. I'm telling you, people are not going to know how to deal with these things. This is why I say you have to be spiritually ready first, above all things. I mean, along with everything else that will be going on, how are you going to function with horrible, loud noises coming from space? Think about that. There are beings, real physical beings that are being held back right now. When the spiritual realm and our realm begin to mix, it's probably when these beings will no longer be held back. It sounds like sci-fi and fantasy. Well, that's Bible prophecy. And it really seems like that everything these rulers are doing is because of it. 
You cannot explain everything away with science. It's all guesswork when the truth is known by few. There will be more on this and I have more content coming very soon. I am getting back into it, folks. So stay tuned as there are several projects. I am, get, I am getting back into it, folks. So stay tuned as there are several projects in the works. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. And until next time, everyone stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.